everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Using Surveys for Your Business. My name is Jill, and with me is me, and we are marketing team members here at Vertical Response. Just a couple things before we get started with the webinar. First of all, this one is slated to be about 30 minutes long. Um, there will be time for Q&A at the end, so if you do think of questions along the way, go ahead and type those into the box that you see in the GoToWebinar window, and we'll be happy to answer as many of those as we can at the end of the webinar. One of the questions we get at every single webinar, um, and no doubt we'll have it at this one, is, is this being recorded? And the answer is yes, we are recording this. I will put this up on our help site on the recorded webinars tab next week. I usually wait about a week after the webinar to put the recorded version up there. And I'll also include the slides, so if you want to take a look at the slides, you can uh, do that as well. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, this is the agenda for today, so you know what to look forward to. So we're going to talk about why you want to do a survey, um, ideas and plans for building your survey. We're going to talk a little bit about analyzing the reporting that comes with um, using the vertical re response survey tool. We have tips sprinkled throughout the whole webinar. And at the end, as we do with a lot of our webinars, we have some survey examples so you can see what we're talking about. Um, when we, when we address some of these different tips along the way. So you'll be able to see what we're talking about. All so. right. Uh, thank you, Jill. So let's get started with why should we do a survey? Well, to get the obvious out of the way, um, doing surveys allows you to get good feedback on how and what your company or organization is, is performing. Um, you can also use surveys in order to find out what your customers or users need or want. Um, so it's a good occasions for you to ask questions of your audience. So questions can range from being uh, how to better understand how they feel about your sales process. For example, is the process easy for them? Were they satisfied with the delivery of your product or with the quality of your service? What factors led to them making a purchase with you? Would they purchase from you again? Uh, you can also find any pain points in your relationship with your current customers. So whether they contact the support, how did the support respond to them, did they help them, why do they like or dislike about uh, your product or service, and would they leave for another vendor or why would they leave. Um, it, and you can also learn how they feel about your products. Are they satisfied with it? How do they use it? Do you have any suggestions for improvements, etc., etc. So there you go. Um, using surveys also help you find advocates for your business. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, helping you keep your customers up up to speed on what your company or organization is doing. Uh, determining your objectives. So, for, for just for like any marketing project that you you start, you want to set out goals for why you're going to do the survey. So, first off is what do you hope to learn from your survey, and also. How, what are you going to do once you get the responses back? So let's let's take an example. Uh, you just organized an event, so and you want to send out a follow-up survey. So the goal for that survey is would be learn how the attendees felt about that event and what are you going to do with those results. Well, you're going to look to make changes and improve upon it for your next event. So a couple things to keep in mind. Um, as me just said, one of the things you, you need to keep in mind is that you need to have a goal before you get started with your survey so that you know what it is that you want to get out of it. This helps to keep you focused when you're writing the questions for your, your survey so that you can, again, apply this information down the road. You want to think about what it is that you want to ask your respondents and then pare down the questions to just the best ones. Um, one of the things that we're going to touch on quite a bit in this particular webinar is you want to keep your survey pretty short, and we're going to mention this quite a bit. Um, it's hard for people. They have very short attention spans these days, so if you have a long survey, it's going to be really difficult to get people to finish the whole survey. Um, and if you do need to do a longer survey, then you might want to give an incentive for that. <clears throat> We have, um, as I said, some examples later where you can see what I'm talking about on how to give an incentive. 
Um, also, set an expectation for the length of your survey. Again, people, if they know that it's going to be short, then they're more likely to complete the survey. And we have a couple of tips on how to set expectations during the um, webinar as well. So you want to target your survey. Um, so before you even start writing your first question, you want to think about who you're going to be surveying um, and also thinking about the subsets of your respondents. So the subsets of the people on your mailing list that you're going to be sending this survey to. And you want to keep in mind what are their experiences with your company or organization, with your products, with your service, making a donation to your organization, whatever it is that you're going to be asking questions about, you want to make sure that they're going to be able to answer the questions that you're asking them. So you don't want to send a survey to everybody on your mailing list if everyone on your mailing list hasn't gone through a certain process in your company or organization. So keep their experiences in mind. And so you'll know what kind of information that you can get from them as well as what kind of actions you're going to be prepared to um, take based on the results that you get from your surveys. Um, also, um, you also have to think about what your relationship is with your recipients. Um, and it's just kind of, it's kind of like sending out your emails. You have your engaged audience and then you have the people who fall into other buckets, people who sometimes open your email, who occasionally make a purchase or a donation or volunteer at your organization. Um, so you have to think about what your relationship is to them and see what type <clears throat> of information you're going to be able to get from them when you send out your survey. And this would be a great way for you to use our um, segmentation tool when you're creating a list to invite people because you can use this type of information and create a list to target specific parts of your mailing list to send your survey to. So, uh, some ideas for your survey. Uh, we'll be going over a few examples in a few slides, but just to throw out some general ideas out there. Um, for example, you could ask your customers what they do or do not like about your product or service, company or organization. Um, for example, if you just launched also a new product or service, it's a good chance to get some feedback on it. Um, towards the end of the year, you can also do send out a survey to, to ask them how uh, how you performed during that year. That will help you with your planning for the, the next one. We see this a lot in January too. We tend to see a, an increase in our survey usage because a lot of people like to find out at the end of the year how things went for their customers Good or point. clients. Good point. And also product or services that you, that you offer or you could offer. Um, and also in terms of communications, um, you can also ask them how they like to be communicated to either by email or newsletters, direct mail, any social media channel, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+. <laughs> um, you can also ask them what, what do they want in an email and how often do they want to be sent an email. And also for organizations, you can uh, ask them to vote on certain topics. You can also use surveys for things like, um, you know, if you do webinars, like training webinars, you could send a survey afterwards and ask if people got the type of information that they were looking for. Um, there's all kinds of things you can use a survey for. So here's kind of a cheat sheet for you uh, to use in terms of ideas for surveys. It's a lot of it I just mentioned. Um, so here's a different, uh, different survey type you can see, either event or activity. Follow-up, so if you just organized a conference, a trade show, a party, a holiday party, um, you, know, you can ask for customer satisfaction surveys or a trend analysis. And um, so some ideas for use, uh, how to promote these surveys, and how often. And again, we'll have this up on the help site, but um, it just gives you kind of an idea of different uses for the surveys. Um, so again, if you're trying to gather information about people who are coming to your website, for example, like in the bottom, um, you can ask specific questions in your survey. That way you can learn more about your audience and send specific information. But we also give you ideas. You can send a solo email for your um, to invite people to take your survey, or you can put a link on your website. Um, so there's a lot of ways to promote your survey to your different audiences, and this chart kind of gives you an idea of how to do all of that. And we'll be going over how you can get your survey out as well uh, later in the webinar. Yeah. 
So once you've decided who you're going to be sending your survey to and you've thought a, bit, a little bit about what your goals are, you want to start getting organized to create your survey. Um, so you want to have some uh, short and interesting questions at the beginning which will help engage your recipients um, so that they start uh, getting into your survey a little bit and answer more of the questions. Uh, you might want to think about breaking your survey up into sections um, and how your um, respondents took um, an action with your company or organization. So for example, what I mean by this is um, maybe you're going to ask them about the purchase process on your website. So you could ask them about the website layout. You could ask them about product description. You can ask them about price point. You could ask them about checkout process. So that would kind of be the steps that somebody would take when they come to your website and the steps they take to uh, make a final purchase. And then you can also use that information to create sections within the survey itself for those different questions. You could have a section on the checkout process and then you can ask survey questions related to that. You know, maybe you also offer a service. You could ask how did people um, get in touch with your company? Was it through email, phone, in person? What service did they use? Who helped? And you could break it up into different sections based on the sort of service and how they came to find your service or use your service. And then creating your questions. Um, first of all, when you're creating your questions, one of the things to keep in mind is that in our survey product, we have templates which have already been created. And the questions were written by professionals um, who do surveys for a living. Um, so the, the questions should be pretty straightforward and should get you a good result. Um, but the one thing I would suggest is that you edit the question so that it sounds more like your voice maybe or to reflect the type of product or service or company that you are. Um, so you want to make sure that your questions are um, short, as I mentioned before, but you also want to make sure they're really clear so that your recipients know what you're asking. And one of the things you can do if you have um, questions that begin with the same phrase, for example, you might want to use that phrase at the beginning of the um, text on the page for the survey, and then you don't have to repeat it so often. So for example, you could have um, introductory text at the top of the survey that says something like, how likely is it that, and then the rest of the questions on the page finish that sentence. So how likely is it that you would use our service again, or you would recommend us to a friend. And then that makes it easier for reading and easier for your recipients to not have to keep seeing the same phrase over and over. Using terms that are familiar to your respondents, again, you want to keep the survey clear. And one of the things you want to be careful with in this area is acronyms. Um, I know we use a lot of acronyms um, for our marketing team, and everything means something to us, and we know what we're talking about. But people outside of our group may not know. So you need to keep that in mind if your recipients aren't going to understand what an acronym is. Be sure to define it. Define it. So normally what you would do is something like, um, if you were creating a survey um, and you wanted to ask questions about an ISP, you could say, which internet service provider, ISP, do you currently use? And then your follow-up questions could be things like, are you happy with your ISP? Is there, an I is there something you're looking for in your ISP? They'll already know what it is because you've defined it. Um, don't ask your questions in the negative because it's really confusing to your recipients if they have to say yes to a question that's phrased negatively in order to confirm the negative statement. It gets a little confusing for people, so try not to do that. Also, try not to um, use leading questions that are going to actually suggest what the answer is, and that would be something like, we just redesigned our website to become a destination, um, destination leader or something like that, which would actually make people say, yes, this is a destination leader type of website or something like that. So um, try not to have the answer that you're looking for in your questions. So we also talked about the survey length, and I keep saying keep it short. Um, the average survey should take 10 minutes. Um, I would say 10 minutes max. People, unless there's something that's really in it for them, um, and you're going to have a hard time getting people's con people to concentrate on your survey for really longer than 10 or 15 minutes. Um, that would be about 30 questions. Um, 
And really, if the questions are short, 30 is okay. If the type of questions that you're asking are things that require a little more thought, um, or they actually have to have a written answer to the questions, I would definitely say less than 30 because it's going to end up taking more time for them to be able to answer that. Um, also, don't trade time for clarity. And what I mean by this is um, even though you want your survey to be fairly short, you don't want to trade the clearness of what your um, question is for the length of time of your survey. Um, if you can't get a clear, if you can't get clear and actionable information out of your survey because you asked really vague questions to save on time, then it doesn't matter how many people finish the survey because the data isn't going to be really useful. So you need to make sure that you're going to get what you need out of the survey as well. Um, and also plan the number of questions per page. Again, as I said earlier, one of the things you want to keep in mind is that you want to manage your recipient's expectations on the length of the survey. So one of the things you can see on the screen is it says page three of seven. Using the page counter on the survey will help your respondents know that they're almost done with the survey or how many pages they have and then managing the number of questions per page so that it doesn't seem like a really long survey is also something to keep in mind. All right, so <clears throat> Jill, I'm sorry, uh, Jill, just to walk you through some of the general rules to designing a survey. So here's some additional tips in order to make, get a good survey out there. Uh, test, just like any marketing, test, test, test. <laughs> it's one just, of our favorite things here on the marketing exactly, team. Exactly, <laughs> get testy. Um, so run through the survey yourself and also don't hesitate to share it with uh, a few other people on your team to make sure that to get an extra pair, a few extra pairs of eyes on it. Um, and and that, we make that easy, too, because you have to actually test it. Exactly. So you don't have a choice, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, so walking through the survey yourself, uh, it will help you get rid of any redundant or confusing questions um, that you know your recipients might face. Um, also, that way you will also be able to see what kind of questions that you would be willing to answer and how long it actually takes for you to answer a question, even knowing that you, you're the one who designed it. Um, so imagine for in, within your recipient's place how long it would take them to do it. Um, keep it long enough for people to respond, so don't close it after, just after an hour after you send it out. Um, <laughs> some people will respond to your survey right away, but if you're like me, you get an email and you see, oh, I'm just going to put it in my to-do list right now because I have other priorities. So try to keep that in mind as well. Um, to run, in order to run A-B split tests, uh, so having multiple versions of your survey out there, you can use a list segmentation tool before you send, uh, send out the email uh, containing the survey. And also know that creating more survey does not actually increase costs since you're, playing a, you're paying a flat, flat fee. I think it's a flat fee per month. Per month, mm -hmm. right? Per responses. So there's like a tier. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, like I mentioned earlier, uh, some people will take your survey right away. Um, but, however, if you send out reminder emails for people, you know, who you know have put it on their to-do list and then completely forgot. Forget, forget about it, uh, sending out follow-up emails with a survey link included again will actually really help increase the number of responses. Um, we su we suggest you not send more than two reminder emails because after that, people will start getting annoyed. And uh, make sure to filter out email addresses of people who, do, who have chosen to subscribe for your, for your mailing lists. And finally, um, it may sound obvious, but make sure your invitation email you're inviting. Um, they should be personalized and provi provide some kind of incentive for people to participate in the survey. If the invitation is written poorly, uh, it might drive respondents away and, or even not catch their attention. So try to use an appealing subject line and make it make the invitation short, clear, and persuasive. Um, we'd say you can expect around a 10% response rate on average, but using some of these tips that Jill and I just outlined should help you improve that. Um, make sure that once you get the results back, don't don't take actions based on just one or two remarks. Make sure that you have a valid sample um, to go with and. Um, once you've decided to make changes to your product or service, uh, make sure to communicate your changes, changes to all your customers in an email campaign or something like that. In that case, anyone wins. Everyone wins.
um, getting the word out on these uh, on, on your survey. So like we said about the invitation email, just make sure to place a link to your survey on your site so people can see it right there. Um, well, as long as it's um, uh, not an anonymous um, survey. Mm -hmm. if, it's, if it's set up as a traditional survey in your account when you go to set it up, you'll have a link. If you do it as a closed survey, then you can only get an email invite to it. Good reminder. Uh, also, include a, don't hesitate to include a link in your transactional or follow-up emails. Uh, link to the survey on a purchase or registration. I'm sorry, one, two, three. Registration thank you page. So at the end of this, at the end of a purchase process, and also you can include a link in your newsletters or marketing emails. So on with the example, a few survey fun survey examples that we found. Uh, this is an example um, of a survey that Sephora has sent out um, that it was asking our customer to review. So even though it doesn't include our mid setup per se, uh, they have a great header and they compliment the recipient. We want to kiss, we want you to kiss and tell. So I guess it's a good way to start. Um, a way to test is, you could actually test incentive versus no incentive uh, as an A-B test. You and you can actually be surprised by the results. Weirder <laughs> things have happened in testing, <laughs> believe me. Uh, next example. And this is actually a recent survey I was invited to. Um, this is uh, an example of one of the things that we talked about as well, where um, you can invite people to give you feedback on a service that you're offering. And so this is a cranberry club that they offer. And so they wanted to get feedback on <clears throat> how it's working for the people in this and um, what they would like to see changed. The thing I like about this invitation email is one, it's really short. It's only about the survey, so this doesn't get lost in um, an email that has additional um, information in it. And um, it tells me exactly how long it is. There's 16 questions. So that should be a pretty quick survey. Um, and then they also have a great call to action button, take survey, right there. I can't miss where the survey link is. They've made it really big and easy to find. So again, this email is inviting, it's short, and I know exactly what I'm supposed to do with this. Um, this is a survey that Ticketmaster actually uh, sent out when they revamped their website last year. So on the page, they first they reintroduced some of the things, um, some of the new features they introduced, for example, the custom event calendar, uh, social sharing features, and uh, history. And so here, the incentive is to you get a chance to win a $500 gift card if you, if you respond to the survey. And uh, we think that's a pretty good touch. Uh, so it also mentioned it's just a five question survey, so short and sweet, and big, big winnings uh, if you're lucky enough. <laughs> uh, here's another good example of an invitation um, email. So again, this one's personalized, it has my name on it. There's lots of links to access the survey. So when I'm reading this email, it's really easy for me to see where the links are to go do the survey. Also, on the right-hand side, again, there's a huge button to go take the survey. I can't miss it. And there is an incentive in here. So first of all, my information is going to help generate information for um, a guide that they're making. And I'll also be able to get um, a free uh, summary report just by taking the survey. So again, sometimes an incentive is important. We saw that on the last slide with the Ticketmaster. They gave away a $500 gift, gift card. You don't have to give money away. Um, this one is just giving away a report for free. So um, that also is something to help incentivize people to finish your survey. Uh, this next survey was sent to Jill by the American Red Cross. So it was kind of a um, general survey they sent out. Um, to get some feedback on the different activities that they were leading. Um, what we like about this one is the personalization. Uh, you can see Dear Jill at the top, but also in the big CTA button that you cannot miss on the right, we need your opinion, <laughs> Jill Bastion. So you can see right away what the, what the call to action is. We also like the fact that it spells out it's only two minutes, so a short and sweet survey, once again, and you, know, you have a time frame to fill it in. And then this is not actually a survey, but this is, they actually use the information from their surveys to populate what they have in their emails and also on their website. So they use surveys to get 
reviews of their products. You could do products or services that you offer and to help sell those. And so they're using this um, in this email, the information that they've gathered from their surveys as part of the email. And uh, this is also something that's great to use on your website. So if you have a service, if you're a nonprofit and you offer some kind of service or you're a mechanic or a plumber or something, you can also get these type of testimonials from a survey like this. Um, it says, my favorite thing about this product is, and then <clears throat> there's a quote from somebody who actually uses it. And that testimonials are great, not just for emails, but also for your website or for your social media. You can use it on Facebook or on a blog or wherever it is that you're sending your customers or potential customers to. Uh, testimonials from even a survey will be great. All right. On to analyzing your reports, so analyzing the responses. So if you're a data geek like me, you're going to have a lot of fun with this tool. Um, so to start off, you go to the reporting tab in your survey, and then you start with a summary. Uh, the summary gives you a look at all the data. So the, the report will give you all the different questions and, and answers. They're shown on either a heat map or a pie chart. And the heat map shows everyone who picked a specific answer. So the colors are darker. Uh, the more popular the answer is. Um, so you'll want to focus on the questions that had one-sided responses. So for example, if a question was how satisfied were you with the product and you get 80% unsatisfied, you might want to take a look at that. Um, and then you want, you'll want to see if there are any common threads based on response. Uh, and also which questions were left blank or received the more unsure answers, even though we would suggest, you know, kind of avoid the neutral options, just have, make people, you know, have a really uh, clear opinion of, uh, of your service or product. Uh, you can also use side-by-side -side reporting. So a good example of that is how recently did you purchase from us? So that way you can compare the more recent buyers to the less recent ones. And if you have multiple products or services, you can find out how do people use one service compared to those who use the other? Uh, or also, if so, based on how they respond to one question, so you can see how they responded to the other, and same thing for the other group. So uh, the VR survey tool we mentioned a couple of times. Uh, this is a screenshot where you can find it in your account. It's in the blue navigation bar. Um, it is free to set it up, and you get 25 free uh, live responses to test it out. Um, and as me just said, we have lots of charts and graphs uh, to help you understand the reporting, and it makes it easy to see how people responded to the different questions. You also can export that data, so if you need to share this information with other people, you can. Um, this is based on a subscription. It's a monthly subscription, and it's based on the number of responses you receive per month. Um, you can upgrade if you need to. If you need more responses in a month, you send out a bunch of surveys and people really like them and they go over the limit. Um, you can easily just add um, another survey subscription um, and then go back down the next month if you need to. So again, it's really easy to set all of this up. It's all done through your account, so I would definitely tell you to go check that out if you haven't already. So this is a quick summary for what we talked about today. Um, you want to determine the goals before you start creating the questions and creating your survey. You want to know what you're, you want to get from your respondents before you even get started. Make sure your questions are clear and concise so that you can get a good response to the information that you're asking and that your data is relevant. Um, plan the length. Again, one of the things we mentioned quite a bit in this particular webinar is um, you want to try to keep it fairly short, so try to keep that in mind when you're creating all of this. Test. Um, we can't emphasize that enough. Testing is important in whatever you're doing to make sure that what's going to work for your, your recipients and your respondents. Um, and then also use your reporting and data. Um, once you've sent the survey out and use it and apply it to your company or, or services in whatever capacity you are asking the question so that you are actually getting the full value from the surveys that you're sending out. And as we usually do on our webinars, we do have some resources for you. Um, all our resources are free, so you don't actually have to use our system. Um, you can use our resources. but. If you are interested in getting started with using surveys in VR, we do have videos and text tutorials on the help site. 
We also have some recorded webinars as well. Besides this one, there are some other ones. <clears throat> so if you click on the webinars tab, you can check those out. The vertical response blog is a great resource for anything to do with the marketing. Um, we have lots of information about email marketing, social marketing, using surveys for marketing. There's all kinds of great information there. And we blog usually three times a week, maybe four, depending on the week. So there's a lot of information there for you. Um, we also have some free guides to help you get started using surveys. So if you go to our guides page, which I have the URL up here, but the easiest way to get there is to go just to our website, Vertical Response, and then click on the tab that says Resources, and you'll see where the free guides are. Um, we have a step-by-step -step guide to survey success, and that'll walk you through creating a survey. Um, nine steps to launch your first survey, which has some of the information we talked about today, as well as best practices for designing your survey. Those are all free guides on our guides page to help you get started um, creating your survey so that you can get more information out of them. So with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up the webinar.